The next object that we're going to scan is going to be the replica of the human brain. And the reason that I chose this object is because if I actually wanted to scan the human brain or another organic material, um, I won't be able to move it. It would deform if I flip it over uh, to scan the top and the bottom surface. Um, so I'm going to have to find a way to scan everything in just one position. We're going to use a previously mentioned technique of uh, transparency and markers to accomplish this task. Um, so you see here that I have this thin acrylic plate, which I put markers on. This is going to be the bottom surface. And then I also have markers on the edge. So I'm going to be placing the brain on top of it like this. And I'm going to be moving it, fixturing it off of the uh, edge of the table so that I'll be able to scan the bottom and then move to scan the top surface. And I'm going to be doing this in one or two projects and probably align them together. Um, now let's go into the scan software and start the scan for the human brain. Now we're in the software and I'm going to be doing a couple scans, probably just two scans of this brain that I showed you. Um, I'm going to click the handheld HD scan here first. And then I'll create a project group, which I'll call group three. Um, the first scan that I'm going to do is going to be with these settings, or actually with medium resolution. So uh, first, there'll be a non-texture scan because we don't need color for this. Um, we're going to be using hybrid, just like with the construction hat, where I will focus on markers and features. I am going to be scanning in classic mode first and in medium resolution, just to kind of show how the scanning process will go. So let's go over this first. Click apply. Once we're in the scan preview page, opening up the camera view. We're going to place the camera's focus on the bottom surface, which means I'll be scanning upwards on an almost flat surface. The markers in view right now will help us uh, with the scan. What we want to do is find a good distance, focus on the markers, and then click the start scan button to start collecting data. I'm going to try to scan as much as I can of this bottom surface before moving to the top because that's really going to help with our overall alignment. Remember that I'm scanning through a clear acrylic piece and only the model on top is being scanned. The markers that you see in red are helping us keep the alignments of this nearly flat surface. But we will lose track tracking at times um, so the remedy for that will be to place the camera's focus on an area that we've already scanned um, and that the uh, software will recognize. Now I'm going to try and move to scan the sides. I place four markers here on the edge in hope that it will help me move from the bottom to the top, um, but it doesn't seem like it's working for this case. I'm either going to need to put more markers on the model towards the side and then the top um, so I can make that cross over, or I can focus on just finishing this bottom surface and start another project to capture the top one. I'm going to do the latter. Uh, and stop the scan soon. Now I can take out the editing tools and clean up the data. I'll have an option to create a new project in this work after generating the point cloud. The bottom surface of this brain model is now complete and we can see the wrinkles that were carved into the model. I don't have many features on the sides, but we can work with this. The scan of the top surface we're about to do will align to this model based on the features um, forming its shape here. On the left side of the screen, under project group, we'll find a create new project button. We'll need to use the same resolution in order to align the two projects together. 
I can change the texture, mode of alignment, or operation mode. For this scan, I only want to change the operation mode from classic to high detail. This will shrink the field of view, but let me focus on the surface details. In the left camera view, you will see that the camera is zoomed in on the model, and this will be the data that is scanned. The smaller field of view helps us scan small to medium sized objects easier. As you can see, as I'm moving across the surface of this model, I'm able to collect um, the full field of view and it's aligning to each other quite easily. The reason for that is because there's a lot of data here, a lot of surface area um, that can be used to align to each other. I'm also scanning on top of the acrylic plates, and you'll see that I can actually scan the reflection of the model for some symmetry. This is a cool trick that you'll be able to do with acrylic plates or anything that reflects light, but in this case, we don't need the data here, so I will delete this later on. Now I'm going to try moving to the bottom surface with the help of the markers on the edge. I have them all in focus now, so I'll just have to slowly bring the bottom in the camera focus. I don't need to scan too much, but this is really going to help with our automatic alignment. I'll pause now and delete the reflected data and other unwanted areas. It looks like I'm still missing a few areas around the side. I'm going to click apply and try filling in these areas again. And I'm going to move slowly, sweep the sides until the data is filled in. Alright, I've tried my best, and I think we did fill in um, a few of those missing areas. I think our first scan also has enough data that can be used to fill in the remaining missing areas here. So we're going to go straight to the align mode. Um, first by generating the point cloud for both projects, and then clicking align on the right side of the screen. Here's the second scan and the first one. I think they will combine together pretty well. Let's go ahead and click align on the right side of the screen. I'll drag the first project to the fixed and the second project to the floating. Then I'll click on auto align on the top left here, feature alignment. Looks like it combined really well. We still have some holes on um, areas of the side here, so if we do want to fill these in um, with our scanner, we can go back to the scan mode and um, start the scan again. Alright, I think I filled nearly everything. Let's click mesh model watertight and high detail to create our 3D model. There we have it. The shape is on point and all the features on the surface are sharp. Let's save out our scan on the right side over here. I hope this tutorial on the process for scanning objects in two projects and aligning the data for a full model was helpful to you. Thanks for watching.